Greetings, 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 everyone. Steve, Paracords of Kindness. How are you doing today? Hopefully your weaving's been happy. Okay, let's see. Shameless plug. Modified concrete jungle stitched. This is a Cetus weave. I've got a tutorial on this one. I put it in the cards and in the description below. Okay, now, I also want to give a shout out to Surf City Paracord Instagram account. He, he or she, I don't know, made one like this, and that's where I got my inspiration from. A lot of people have commented, well, I've posted this, <coughs> and I want to give credit where credit's due. I got the idea from him, or her, whichever. Surf City Paracord, theirs looks a little bit better than mine. This was a first attempt. This triangle, we can see it's kind of wonky right there. It's not a perfect triangle. His, look, his triangle or prism looks a lot better. But, I don't have a tutorial for this. I just use my, my knowledge base to do it and come up with basic fishtail with a whole bunch of stitching. That's really all it is. But it looks really good. Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. For those who don't know, we'll turn it around. We'll let's see. We'll turn around so you can see. It's supposed to be a beam of light going into a prism and it coming out the other side. Okay, now, with well, that said, okay, what I have for you today, I'll say this. For those who follow me on, you know, various social media platforms and watch the videos I make on YouTube, often what I'll do. When I make a bracelet, a weave, that I've never done before, the first thing I'll do when I get done weaving it together is pull out my stitching needle and some scrap micro cord. Now this is not scrap, we're going to be using this today, but I'll pull that out and I'll start poking holes in the bracelet, trying to find where and how I can create a stitching pattern that will look good. Not all of these bracelets can be stitched in a way that's going to be pleasing to the eye. Um, sometimes just the way the weave is put together, it doesn't look right. The micro cord falls down in the crack, gets hidden, and it just doesn't look right. But the ones that I end up creating a stitching pattern for, I'll stitch them. And this, yesterday I did this one. This is the first time I had ever done this. This album. Um, this is a Cetus weave also. This is a Cetus weave. There is a tutorial. I'll give a shout out to Alpha1982's YouTube channel. He, as far as I know, he's the only one that has a tutorial on how to make this bracelet. Go watch his channel and you'll see. It's um, The name of the bracelet is the Iroquois Path Modified. Iroquois. Tribe of Native Americans. Um, I-R-O-Q-U-O-I-S. That's how it's spelled. The Iroquois Path Modified. This is a serious wave. Hey, Alpha1982 is the only one I know has got a tutorial. But if you're on Instagram, Cetus has multiple accounts or multiple profiles. One of them is Cetus. C-E-T-U-S. Cetus Weaving. And that account has nothing but pictorials, like you would see in his books. Now there are some things on the on that account that are in his books, but then again there are some things that are on that account, those pictorials that aren't in that aren't in any of his books, and that I've never seen anybody make a YouTube tutorial for. But this one, it's on that weaving page. It's simply a pictorial panel by panel, step by step, showing you how to do it. You can either go there if you have an Instagram account, see this weaving. Um, if I remember, I'll put the link below in the description to that. Also, I'll put the link to Surf City Paracord, where I got the inspiration for this. I'll put the link in the description below. Um, yeah, I'll put the link to Alpha 1982's tutorial on this. I'll put that in the description below also. Um, but, I made the bracelet and I sat down and I stitched it. I've had quite a few people ask me about how did I do that? Well, trial and error is how I did it. But I made one again. I made another one, 
and I'm going to stitch it. And I figured, why not just make one video, put it on YouTube, that way the next time somebody asks me, I can point them to the YouTube channel, and they can see how I do this. Okay, now like I said, y'all bear with me. You know, I th my YouTube channel, I don't claim to be perfect. Come along on this journey with me, and you can learn from my mistakes. Keyword, my mistakes. That's how we learn by messing up, right? I'm going to tell you, this is going to be the second time I've done this. This was the first, and this is the second. So I may mess this up. I may do it and go, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm doing it wrong, back up. Wait. So pay attention. But hopefully, I'll be able to do this and get it on camera, and I'll be able to explain to you how I'm doing it. So you can see, and you'll be able to see it, and you can recreate this for yourself. Okay, um, I'll show you. What I'm going to do today, I'm going to do this center stitch, which is this. What we have here, for those who want to know these colors, smoke gray in, the, in this baby blue, and the zigzag down the middle is fuchsia, and this wrap around on the side is acid purple. Okay, what I'm going to show you how to do today, or how I do it, is this fuchsia, the zigzag center stitch, as I would call it. Right? Okay, now just so we know, that's one big long piece. It starts up here, and it zigs, zags, zigzags all the way down. Alright? Now just to let you see, that's the front of it. If we can get it to focus in again. It's not going to focus. But that, you, you get the idea. Okay, now the back of it. Just so we know, this is a four-strand core, right? Like I tell people, when you stitch one of these, when you go through the front side of the bracelet and you come out the back, often you have to have you have to wrap around something on the back side before you come back through the front side. If not, when you pull it, it will pull back through. Does that make sense? You got to wrap around something. And a lot of these Cetus weaves, they're done in such a way as that you can wrap around the core strand. Now, you can't quite see it in this picture, but there's a core strand, a gray core strand, running right down on this side, and that's what the fuchsia is wrapped around. Okay, let me zoom in. Maybe this will help. <coughs> Maybe this will help it be seen a little bit better. Let me zoom in to see. Yeah, you can kind of see here, my handy dandy laser paracorder pointer over here. You can see that core strand running down through there, and that's what the fuchsia is wrapped around. The same thing on this side. You can kind of see it right there, but there's a gray core strand running down there. Now, you can obviously see it on this one, but it's blue. It's this midnight blue right here. That's what we wrap around. All right? Now, well, basically, we do. A zig, and we wrap around one side. We go through, we zag, and we wrap around the other side. We go through, you see what I'm saying? And we alternate. Y'all see me done a lot of this. A lot of this stuff is it's just one basic technique, but you got to figure out how to get it through the bracelet and where to wrap it around on the back. You do one side, you do the other. You do the next side, you do the next side. And you just work your way down. Right? And like I've said in the past, when you've got this core going across down through this hole, and it comes through, and it comes back through the same hole, you got to wrap it around something on the back to keep it from pulling back through that hole. Right? And I'm going to show you how to do it. And this one is not that hard to do, but for those who know, neat, clean, and tight. And I make my bracelets just so... This thing is, that's tight. I mean, that's, that's hard as a rock, right? So, when I, when I do one of these, it's pretty tight. So, stitching it, getting that needle through there can often be a challenge at times. But like I've said in the past, if you know you're going to stitch the bracelet, I would recommend not pulling it as tight as you might normally do. That way, it's still a little loose. That way, when you do stitch, you can actually get your needle through there easier. And 
after you do all the stitching, it tightens it up a little bit. But me, I just pull the thing as tight as I can and I deal with it a lot of times. But that thing, that's hard. It's not, it, it ain't like a sponge. It's hard. But I'll show you how I'm going to do this. Now, like I said, this is going to be the second time I've done this show. Bear with me if this takes me a minute to get it done. Okay, now, first off, This center blue, the center piece of the blue. I'm not going to do this first one because it just kind of looks out of place, the stitching loop. I'm going to start on this next one down. And all we're going to do see how you got this gray piece. It's kind of this gray piece running from here across to this side. Right? It's kind of got an angle like this. Not very steep angle, but it is there. And in this next piece, it comes from here to here, and it's angled the opposite way. So each of these pieces that alternate the angle. You see what I'm saying? But what we're going to do is we're going to follow the top side of that piece of gray. The piece of gray that my I'm actually pointing at right there, we're going to follow the top side of it. And in the next pass, that would be the zig, the zag is going to follow the top right here. You see what I'm saying? That's how that's how we're going to do this. That's that's the where we're going now to actually do it. We're going to flip it over. Like I've said in the past video, gives you a little tip if you've never heard this. When you know you're going to stitch one, cut off your excess. You know you might have. Three or four inches, you might have a couple of feet. It doesn't matter. Cut it off. That way you don't have all that in the way. But don't cut and burn it to the final, your final burn. Why? Because that big piece of melted plastic potentially could get in your way of trying to get your stitching needle through there. So you just do it like this. And then once you get done doing all your stitching, everything, everything's finished, then you cut and burn at the very end, right? Okay, there's your tip for the day. Okay, now, we're going to start this. Let me look at this and make sure we're going to get this right. Okay. Like I say, I brought all, the end of all three of these weaving cords into the same spot. Because it's the way this one's put together, it's an offset core. If you, you understand what that is. Um, if you don't know how to set up the offset core, which is what this bracelet is, there's a core setup playlist link in the description below. Four strand core with an offset working in. Check out the video. I'll show you how to show you how to set it up. Um, but you have this little nub sticking out because it. It doesn't get woven in the brace. I always back weave it into the back side. And since it's going to get be a cut and burn there, I'm going to anchor my micro cord in the same place. That way, all those burns will be right there in that one spot, just like down here. They'll all be in one spot. Make sense? Okay, now, well, that's it. Let's actually get the stitching. Everybody's like, stop talking, Steve, and start stitching. Okay, let's see. All we're going to do is go up under this piece of gray right here. Just like this blue is, we're just going to go up under that piece of gray. Just like that. Right? Now, as always, pull it through. Kind of put your thumb on it, hold your little pressure there, a little tension. That way, when you get to the end, when you get to the end, just be careful that you don't pull it all the way through and then have to do it again. That's what that's for. Just kind of hold it. You know, leave you a little bit, a little bit hanging. All right. Now, the way I'm going to do this, start one of these things. Like I, like I say in all my videos, 
When you start a break, start weaving a bracelet, the very top and the very bottom is never going to look the same as the meat of the bracelet. Okay? It's the same way with stitching. Because everything's kind of not right, not in place. But it's the beginning of stitching is a little different than when she actually get down to here. Right? Okay, so let's see. We're going to do this. Uh, this is the way I'm going to do this. I want to come out right here. But I don't want to wrap. I could just take this cord, wrap right here, and go right through there. But I don't want to do that because you'll see the gold. I want to hide that gold as much as I can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through right here. Like that. I'll just pull it through. Let me back the camera out just a little bit. That way it's, it, it'll be a little easier for me to stay in frame. Pull your slack through. When you get to right there, hold that piece of gold, give it a little tuck. See, it kind of it disappears up under there. You don't see it. Okay, now we're going to flip around to this side. Okay, now what we're going to do, I found it on this other one when I did it. The way I did it. It, was a, it seemed counterproductive, but it actually worked easier. It, was, it made it easier to get this needle through this bracelet. Now, it should do the same way on this one. Like I said, we're going to follow this little groove right here. But when we get over to this side and we're going to run it through, we're going to come out right here. Let's see. Let me make sure I'm... Let me make sure I'm looking at this right. I'm going to follow it around on the top of that piece of grave through this, through this groove. But when you get over here, you're not going to try to go through here. Bring your needle down just a little bit where these two pieces of grave meet and go through right there. It seems to go, on the one I did yesterday, it seemed to go through a little easier. But we want to come out where this blue core string is. We want to come out over here on this side of the core strand and then we're going to wrap back across and go through right there okay so let's see if I can get this to go through there once I get it through there I'll show you what I'm talking about not up here where the groove goes drop it down where these two pieces of gray meet and you kind of push it through and then the way I was doing it was giving it a little bit of a a little bit of a tweak see I'm bending it down a little bit bam you see it's coming out right there where I wanted it to and it's pretty easy it's not a tight it fits right through there right. now we pull our excess through Mindful of your twist. Get those twists out. All right. Okay. Now we got it right there. Reach back here and hold that gold with your thumb as you give it a little snug down. It kind of pulls it down in that groove a little bit. Okay. Now what we're going to do? Let's orientate ourselves. Top of the bracelet where we're starting at. We're going to flip it over. You see where I come out at? All we're going to do is wrap it this way. And we're going to go through with well, this gray, 
and this piece of blue meet right here up under that core strand. That's where we're going to go through, and we're going to come out in the same spot right there where that this piece of gold went down in there. Does that make sense? So, I'm going to orientate myself. Again, staying above that piece of gray, I'm going to wrap around that blue core string right there. Go right through there. Make sure that your needle doesn't poke through that piece of gold micro cord that you just ran through there. That's the problem I kept running into yesterday. If you need to pull that piece again back here, and it seats that piece you just ran kind of down in there and it gets it out of the way. Then, now you can see the tip coming through. You see that where it come out? Come out in the same place it went through. And all we did was wrap around that core strand on the back. Okay? Now we just push it through. We'll pull our excess through. Alright, bam. There's our first wrap around. Like on this one. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to follow this next piece of gray. We're going to follow this top groove across to right here. And we're going to go through right in this area. And if you look, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this on the camera. Yeah, you can kind of see it right there. You see in between these two pieces of blue, there's a piece of gray down inside there. You want to stay on the inside, over here on this side of that piece of gray, but at the end of these two. So we're going to go through right in that area. Well, we see that. Now I'm going to orientate myself so I can get the angle on this right. Go through right there. And again, we're going to come out that blue core strand running down there. We're going to come out on that side of it, over here on this side of it. Like I said, right here at the top where all this stuff's kind of not completely the top and the bottom, the top and the bottom of the brace is always a little different, so it might be a little difficult to get it to go through. You just got to work with it and play with it, but once you yeah, see there it is. You see the tip of it right there. You see how, like I said, that blue core strand is on that side. All right? Now we just pull it through. Get our excess done. Now that we've got it wrapped a few times, we don't have to worry about holding our anchor piece anymore. All right? Make sure it's going to seat that in the little groove where you want it. All right? Okay, now, right here, this, this piece right here is kind of in our way. So we just kind of move it out of the way. You can see, we come out. Let me try it this way. Maybe you can see this. It's the gold come out here, and that piece of blue core strand. We're going to go wrap around it, and we're going to go through right here. And we're going to come out right here in the same spot. So we fold around. See? This, 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 I say this, I say this, I, I was telling a buddy of mine, normally when you do this zigzag type center stitch, it can be difficult trying to get the, the needle to go through there and the right angle and all that, and you got to push it through because everything's so tight. Normally, that's the way it is. This one is pretty simple. Now, in 
ironic or just the opposite, most of the time this little spiral stitch that's on the outside edge, usually that's pretty easy. On this weave, that was the hard one. The center one was the easy one. Usually it's the opposite way around. The side one's the easy and the center zigzags the hard one. But on this one, it's pretty easy. It just takes you some time to do it because you got so much of it. Now, we're going to pull the excess through and I'll show you. This is the way I do this. I'm going to take that piece of gold and make sure it goes up under this piece of blue. Instead of pulling it like this, right there, I'm going to put it underneath that piece of blue. See what I'm saying? So it's only wrapping around that core strand. And now we're going to do it again. We're going to go from over here, following this groove across the top, and we'll get over here. We're going to kind of drop down where these two pieces of gray meet. And you see that piece of gray that's inside there? We're going to come on the, that piece of gray that's down in there. So you can see it better on this, this repetition. See what I'm saying? But it's in there. You want to come on this side over here of that piece of gray. a little tight right there. Okay, there we go. I think that's it. See how I got it in there. Now I'm going to kind of kick that angle on it. So you can see the tip of it come out right there. Bam. Pull it. That poor excess through. Get it right there. Just I'm pulling back here. See it kind of tighten up, kind of pulls it, seats it down in that groove a little bit. Okay. Now again, like I said, we'll come out that blue blue core strand that's running right down through there. We'll come out over here on this side. Now we're going to do is wrap around and go through right there. Wrap around the core strand, and where this piece of blue and this gray meet, right there in that little area, and we're going to go through. Right there. What's the problem here? Okay, there we go. See where I went through at? Like I said, the blue core strand. We went from one side, wrapped around it to the other side. You can see where I'm coming out. Like I said, make sure when you come out, you don't snag through the my, the gold cord that you just ran down through that hole. Be careful. Push it through. Pull your excess through. When you get close to the end. Well, you make sure you don't have a twist. And get your twists out. got tangled around that piece of blue. And that'll happen, that'll happen until I get down here in the stitching, that little piece is going to get in the way. That's why I cut them as short as I do, because if they're even longer, they're going to continue to get in the way. You cut it, you need it there so it doesn't get pulled back up under. You need a little bit of length so they get pulled back up under there, 
but you don't want it so long that it's continuously going to be in your way. So, you know, inch, inch and a half, something like that. You get right here, give it a little pull. It'll pull that down. It'll pull that piece of gold down in there where you want it. Alright, we're going to do it again. We're going to follow this piece, next piece of gray. We're going to follow the top groove. We're going to go to right here. We're going to go through. And we're going to come out. Blue core strand on this side of the blue core strand. We're going to come out right here in this area. Right? Give a little snug. Now we're going to do it again. We're going to come from this side of that blue core strand. We're going to wrap across. We're going to go through right there. See that? And that's it. I mean, that's all there is to it. This one's not that hard. Once I figured out how to do it and and everything, I, I was like, well, that one's pretty easy. It just takes a little bit of time because every every one of these spots you see when there's this blue, you got to do you got to do it. So you know it take you a little while to do it, but you can see the pattern beginning to form right there. But I'm going to go ahead and weave this out, or stitch this out, I should say. I'm going to stitch it out to the end. When I get down here to the end, I'll come back and we'll do a cut and burn on it. Now, this one's not being made for my wrist, so um, I can't do the trial by fire like you see me off to do well. At the very end, I'll put it on my wrist to see if it fits. Can't do that one with this one. This one's not made to fit my wrist. This is made to fit somebody else's wrist. But um, I'll come back and I'll... I'll I'll show you what it looks like when I get done. I'll show you how I finish it up. But stick around, folks. Okay, folks, I'm back. And I got this thing stitched out. Let's take a look at what it looks like. Got it stitched out, except to right here at the end. Like I said, I, I figured I'd come back and show you. I'm going to cut and burn it. And uh, we'll finish it off, and I'll give you a final look. Now, I, like I've said, the end of it and the beginning of it, they're always kind of woven slightly different or whatever. So on this one, the way I'm going to do this, you see this little gray piece right down in here? Well, it's so far down in there and it's hidden and it's kind of, <coughs> like I say, different. I'm not even going to try to stitch that one. I'm going to just stitch this one right here and be done with it. So we're going to just follow it across. And basically, I'm going to just go up under that piece of blue that I got there. And then what I'm going to do, because eventually, I'm going to go, this piece of gray here, I'm going to run it up under just like the rest of these. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up under this piece of gray that's coming out right here, and then going up under there. I'm going to run it up under that, and then come back up there. Because the reason I'm gonna, the reason I do that is because if I just right here where it's at, if I just run it up under that piece of gray that's going across there, this gold is gonna be way down here in this corner. Well, when I what I want, I want it to be up here with these three, preferably on the top. That way, when I cut and burn all these three and the speaker micro, all the that melting will will melt together into one solid piece. I've heard me say it before. Try to get them all together. Definitely on the back side. But try to get them all in the same place. That way when you cut and burn them, all that melted 
paracord fuses together into one lump as opposed to cutting and burning one piece here, one piece here, and one piece here. Because if you cut them all together, they're not going to go back through. They're not going to come unwoven over time. So I'm going to try to get this up under that piece of gray right there. Let me get it through there and I'll show you. Now, you know, however you finished your bracelet might be slightly different than the way I have finished this one. So, you know, I, I've said this and I've said this. When I first started doing this, I always wanted to watch the tutorials. How did they start it? And how did they finish it? Now, I mean, I watch how they finish it just to see how they do it. And, you know, they might be some good information. Oh, I like that. I'll do mine that way. But most often, I just, I don't even worry about it and just get to the end and I figure it out once I get there. But, I have the confidence because I've done this. I've got enough experience that it gives me confidence in doing this. I, okay, let me shut up so I can get this thing through there. I can't get it to go up under there. Right, there we go. We see what I did. I'm gonna we'll just pull it through right there. Kind of give it a, a snug down, and then I'm gonna just run it up under here. But I've done I've done this enough, and I got enough experience that I just get to the end and improvise. You know, try to maintain a, a consistent looking pattern. But it's not always possible, and it's not always going to look exactly the same. But you do it the best you can. And, you know, but the more you do this, it's like anything, practice, practice, practice. The more you do it, the more experience you get, and it will, you will become more confident in it. Okay, now, those, I had a piece of, this bracelet was, is for a seven and three quarter inch wrist. Um. And I cut this piece just over six inches, about six inches or six feet and three inches, just to make sure that I would have enough. Now we see I've got just over a foot. I got just over a foot of micro cord left, which is fine by me. I'd rather have enough to be able to finish than to get almost and go, oh, I don't have enough. But, so, now, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to cut it down here yet. I'm going to cut it up here. I'll show you. I'll tell you why I'm doing it this way. Just a second. I'll melt that in. Even though we're about to actually cut and burn the final. final. But, I'm going to do it that way. Give it a chance to harden up. Okay, now I'm going to come back and what I'm going to do, I always do a final check and look at it because I'm going I'm to cut and burn these right here first. Flip it over and look at it. Make sure it's, make sure everything looks straight the way you want it and especially that first, first piece of micro cord that you ran. Make sure that it's tight because sometimes all this moving and stuff it will kind of come loose, so we're going to make sure it's tight. And then this piece also, make sure it's tight. And make sure everything looks right, the way you want it. Yeah, that piece of gray, <coughs> that was an issue, and I still don't like the way it looks perfectly. It looks better than the other one, but... It'll do. But it looks pretty good. Now we're going to cut and burn these two. Now what I'm going to try to do, if you look, you see how this gold is coming out. If I get a hold of it. It's coming out over here, and it blues over here. I'm going to try to get this piece of gold. So 
something didn't do right. Okay, we're gonna fix this. What I'm getting at is that piece of gold. See how that is? Yeah, that's not good. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fix this on the fly. How am I gonna do this? Okay, I think what I'm gonna do, I think the best way to do this is to come bring this piece of gold up over like this. Up over that piece of gray right there and then come back up under the back side of it so it comes out there. Now to do that, I can't put my lacing needle on it because it's not long enough. So, that's where human snakes come in. I should be able to do this. I'll zoom in so you can actually see what I'm doing here. Maybe a little bit better. A pair of human stats. Now I've got a pair that are straight, but these are curved and these these seem to work a little easier. Because you're trying to go up under there, you can get it at an angle. If you got a straight pair, you're having to do it like this, and it can be a little difficult, so. And I pulled mine pretty tight, so this is going to be. See how? We can see that. See how I got it up under there? Now I got to push it all the way through so I can open them up, because right now I can't open them up enough. Yeah, I can get that open just enough. I'm going to take that piece. Open up them jaws and just stick it through there and grab a hold of it and pull it back through. Like that. Like that. Now, I can get that piece of gold over here where I want it. And it's got this wrap around on that piece of gray as opposed to just going straight up there to where we want it. Makes for a little bit more secure. Okay, now. I always say, I'm going to back out so we can see a little bit better. Like I always say, when you get ready to do this, whatever you use to flatten it, whether it's the corner of your lighter, a pair of scissors, a smoothing tool, a spoon, I use the gnarled end of my knotting tool. That's what I use. Whatever it is, have it at the ready. Because you don't want to get this hot and molten plastic and then be digging trying to find your smoothing tool. Have it right there at the ready. When you cut this, I, I, I've had a, a friend of mine, he's new to this, and he's he's been asking a lot of questions, and I've been giving him pointers here and there. He's been watching a lot of these videos, and his, his cut and burns, he realizes he needs to work on this, and he he went, he, he said, I think my problem is I'm cutting them to, too close. Uh, maybe. I haven't actually seen how much he leaves when he cuts but maybe this will help him because I know he's going to watch this video when you cut it especially on a bracelet like this where when you go to cut this and to burn it I should say when you go to burn it there's really nothing in the way that's going to potentially get melted which you don't want to be melted right so you can leave you a little extra room. But some of these weaves that you go, when you go to burn them, the nature of the way the thing's put together, it's kind of hard to get just to the two cords you want, and potentially you'll melt part of the bracelet. Right? But this one, it's no big deal. It's right there in the open. I say this. <laughs> now watch me burn the bracelet. But you can cut you a little bit. And when you, I mean, leave you a little bit of slack. That way you got something there. You've got something there. See how much I got sticking out? Now here's a trick for you, my friend. Um, and anybody, anybody. But this may, may help you. Since you're new, you may not know this. You may not think of this. Now this one is kind of stiff. So it's not going to be the easiest thing. But what you can do... 
when you get ready to burn it you can bend your bracelet back a little bit right now I'll show you this too if you look at this if I try to come at it from this angle coming straight up and burn it I potentially will burn this gray piece right here so come at it from down here and let the heat rise up to it this way and there's nothing up above it now you know like I've said I use one of these little you can't see the flame on it but it's a mini torch it's not your regular disposable big type lighter like I say light it bring your flame to the bracelet don't have it there and click it because you might have it pointed at the wrong spot do it over here and I'm going to move this light so I can see the flame yeah there we go with that bright light I won't be able to see the flame but you can do this y'all may, may or may not be able to see it and that's it Smooth it out. Give it, give it a chance to cool off a little bit. And then reach up there with your finger. Make sure it's smooth. Make sure it doesn't have any little burrs or teats or hard edges or anything like that. Because that's going to be against most, one of the most sensitive parts of your body. For any of you who have babies, and you squirt the milk on your wrist to see the pink. That's why. It's one of the most sensitive parts of your body backside of your wrist and that's where that's going to be so if it's got a little edge teeth burr whatever yeah you're going to feel it so you will make sure it's smooth okay now the bottom one we're going to do it the same way and you can take them i do this sometimes you can take these things kind of bend it back that way it'll, it'll kind of stand up a little bit as opposed to being laid down flat now these stick cords they're going to they're going to lay down flat anyway especially after you cut them but it gives you something there to burn as opposed to being right next to your bracelet. And this is, this is the same way. The way we did this, it's the same way with this. There's not much in the way. As long as you come at it from like maybe this angle as opposed to trying to do it like, sorry, do it, don't do it this way because you might potentially burn that piece of gray. Flip it sideways and come at it this way. And burn that first gray one. And let the heat rise and it'll burn them all, it'll get them all melted into one. Does that make sense? But it's like anything, it just comes with experience. And like I say, I'm not perfect. There, there are times I do some of these and I actually melt part of the bracelet that I don't want melted. But you see how I'm taking them and I'm bending them back a little bit in hopes that when I go to cut them, They'll be sticking out as opposed to laying flat. And this same way, you don't have to cut these real close. You can leave some length on these so you've got actually got something there to direct your flame to. See what I'm saying? We'll come at it like this. kind of let them all get a little melty let them kind of melt together just be careful as you stay on them and not to bring the light back over here and I know some people some people don't like the fact that it gets black like that well look at it this way this is what I say that's the non display side you're not gonna see that right and the reason it turns black is because you hold the heat on it and it starts to quote unquote burn but what that does that ensures that those three pieces of 550 and that microcord, all that melting plastic melts together into one piece. There's times when you do this, even though the cords will be next to each other, like the three cords are next to each other, and you burn them, 
this one will burn, this one will burn, this one will burn, you'll flatten it out. When you go to look at it, you can tell it's three separate pieces. And they're not actually, the melted plastic didn't weld them, if you will, together. And that's what I'm trying to do is weld them all together. Why? Because that one big huge piece of plastic, there is no way that it's going to come back through up under that piece of gray over time. If you've just got one piece kind of barely mushroomed or flattened out, it can. I've seen it. Some of my early work did that. It would come loose over time. But again, but that's it. But again, we just make sure it's smooth. It's cooled off enough now. Make sure it's smooth. All right, and that's it. Now let's let's see. This one's kind of stiff, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little. You know, I'm gonna clip it. I'm gonna throw this in the trash. All right, let's see what we got here. Seven and three quarter inches. There's a seven inch and there's an eight inch. That looks about right to me. But there you go. That's how I stitch a modified the Iroquois path by Cetus. I'll give you another look at that. But I appreciate you watching. Check out the links below. Give us a like. Give us a subscribe. And I'll end this one like I end them all. Keep it neat. Keep it clean. And keep it tight. Happy weird, folks.